Okay, good morning. This is Laura Spray, North Highland College. So this is week 13 of control and instrumentation. Um, this is just going to be an exam revision week. Um, so students here have requested that I go over the the past papers, semester one exam, 1718. I don't know if people can see that, but on the screen there. Yeah. So we'll start with that. If we have time, I can look at some of the other ones. There's four um, practice papers altogether. I left my other ones over there, don't I? No. Oh, no, here we you know. But anyway, so I'm just going to do the calculations in part. So that's from section two, really, potentially. Um, some of the students here are asking what sort of questions you can ask, be asked in part three. So part three is a kind of knowledge test. Uh, so you condition monitoring, SCADA, you've seen those in the past paper anyway. You could be asked about PID control. You could be asked to compare PID and two-step control. Uh, you could be asked about what constitutes an instrumentation system and to explain that sort of sketch a block diagram and to explain what the blocks are. Uh, you could be asked to explain the parameters which you use to specify an instrumentation system, so things like accuracy, sensitivity, resolution, range, you know, all these parameters. Um, trying to think what else. I suppose theoretically you could be asked about instrumentation amplifiers and to talk about them, how they're better than normal amplifiers. Can't know, not sure if you get 10 marks out of that or not. So that might be combined with something else. But anyway, that's all I can think of. I can't remember anything else off the top of my head. So just be aware, you could be asked anything on your theory. But it's going to be a theory topic that's got enough in it for you to talk about and that you probably haven't been tested on elsewhere in the paper. Okay, so we'll just switch over. I'll go on to this. I can find this actual paper. I'll just go through these calculation questions. So you should... Does anybody... Any specific questions they want me to do, or you just want me to do the whole lot? Right? The whole lot, right. Okay, that's fine. Um, so... Uh, I'll switch over to here. So you can see which paper we're doing. So we're going to do... Past papers. I think it's in this folder here, past papers. Um, okay. Can you start it at this one? Yeah. Is that the right one? Yeah. So, um, I'm not sure whether to bring up the solution or just go through the solution. I think I'll just bring up the actual exam paper and then the solution I'll do on the board. That might be more sensible. That should be this one, I think. Let's make sure we get the right one first. No, it's not the right one. Is that the right one? It's the same one, I think. That looks good. That just exam seventeen eighteen. That looks different. No, I think it's the exact same. You think it's the same one? Well, yeah. multiple choice are different exact same. That's it, right? That's it, yeah. Okay, that's the best with a different name on the. You sure that's it? Let's look at the one I did. Yeah, that's it. Different system. Yeah, okay, that, yeah, this is quite a good one to do, so let's go for this. You'll see that there's a similarity to the questions anyway in all the papers. Okay. Generally, you'll be asked to um, convert a block diagram to a, a single transfer function. That'll be one of the questions. Um, there's probably going to be a question on working out steady state errors, um, position constant, constants, velocity constants, acceleration constants. Usually a question on that. Um, there's likely to be a question on frequency response, so Nyquist, Bode or Nichols charts, um, poles and zeros in the frequency domain, stability and instability. Um, what else? What else is? What's that? That's a bird plot one. Yeah, that's all. Maybe one on, uh, maybe a calculation on instrumentation as well. It would be a difficult calculation for the instrumentation. The instrumentation is a wider subject, but it's not quite so <coughs> tricky mathematically. But bear in mind, you could be asked anything about oh, the instrumentation side. Anyway, so I'll switch over to... Hopefully you've got the paper in front of you there. And I'll turn the lights on a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. The other thing I would say about the exam is um, don't panic, you know, when you go into the exam. So of you might be a first exam at this level. <coughs> So just stay calm. It's just your chance to show me what you know. You know, it's not really anything to really be worried about. If you fail, you've got a chance of another doing it again later on. But um, just stay calm. Read through the paper. Make sure you 
if you pick a question um, to start with that you know quite well, that's that's maybe quite a good idea. Um, don't make sure you've read through the whole thing. Don't just jump in and start answering a question and then finding halfway through you don't know it because that will probably make you panic and then you'll run out of time. Uh, the other thing is you don't lose marks more than once for a mistake. So if you make a mistake right at the beginning and you realise you made a mistake, don't waste too much time trying to correct that. Just carry on with the answer you've got because you'll only lose the mark for the first mistake. Um, equally, if you get to a point where you can't find a solution, um, if you just make up some numbers and then carry on with the numbers you've made up and just say, the solution didn't work, I'm going to use these numbers or something like that, and then carry on with that, you'll still get the full marks for the rest of the, the calculation. It's actually quite easy to pass. You only need 33%. It's not difficult. 30%? 30%, yeah. Most people should do a lot better than that, I think. Okay, anyway, so this one, fairly typical question. This is obviously your input. That's your output, your control variable. There so you've got your feedback. So it's a bit of knowing about your block diagram reduction and um, how to cope with the feedback path there. So the first thing you're going to do um, with a system like this <clears throat> is look at the side to the right hand side of the error detector or the summing block. Combine that and then multiply by that. But you could get you could get a question where perhaps there might be another transfer function here. And in that case, the first step would be to multiply this transfer function by that one to get a single one in your forward path. Yeah, that makes sense? Okay. So, and then it's just a matter really of doing the maths um, and also remembering the formula. You won't be given this formula. So the formula for the feet combining that and that, um, anyone want to tell me what that is? Okay, I've got the wrong page open anyway. What's the formula for combining feedback with a forward transfer function to get a single? You know, you're trying to combine those to get just a single one that looks like that. One over one plus g h or something. Like that. <coughs> g over one plus g h. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you need to remember that one. Um, if you're really lucky, it might come in the might come up in the multiple choice. <laughs> so some of your answers might be in the multiple choice, but, but um, I wouldn't rely on that. I would just try and remember that. So G, of course, is this one, and H is always the feedback one. That's just com by convention. So if we do G over 1 plus GH, we've got 5 over S plus 1. That's G here. And then in the bottom line, we're going to have 1 plus G times H, which in this case is 2. So what would be the first step for trying to simplify that a bit? Silence. Nobody wants to, they're all too scared to say the wrong thing, I think. Okay, um, multiply by the S plus 1 to get rid of the denominator terms. I might give up asking you questions, because I think you just want to do, don't you? Okay, multiply by the S plus 1. Um, if you, so if you multiply by the S plus 1, you've got to multiply, if you think about your algebra, anything separated by a plus or minus sign, um, and top line and bottom line, numerator and denominator so that you're not changing the actual equation, you're just making it look simpler. So if we multiply everything by s plus 1, um, the top line, we just end up with 5, because the two s plus 1s cancel. Um, I, can, I can put it there, but... Yeah, so essentially what you're doing is that. Um, so the top line, the two s plus 1s cancel. I don't want to make it too complicated, because I'm sure you can do this. They're going to cancel here as well, um, and that's going to be left with s plus 1 on the bottom there. Um, and on this side, you've ended up with 2 plus 10, 2 times 10, rather. Yeah, 2 times 10. Sorry, 2 times 5 gives you 10. <laughs> it's a wrong thing. Okay, so 2 times 5, I'll, I'll do it in two step steps if you want. But... Yes, yeah, 2 times 5 gives you 
to be 5 over s plus 11. So it is quite important that you've got an algebra for this test. You know, there's quite a lot of algebra in it. The question's about that. Okay. <coughs> And the next step, I suppose, you can think about what we're actually doing. We don't need to do this in the exam, obviously, but what we've got is 1 over s plus 2, and then this 5 over s plus 11. That's our system now, yeah? Input, output. So now it's just a matter of combining the two blocks. Let's check I'm doing this right. Okay. Uh, Oh, it doesn't show you how to do this. Okay, that's quite odd. Yeah, so this is a good paper to go over because you don't actually have the answers in it, so not properly anyway. Okay, so if we can extend that. Oops, not quite as much as that. Anyway. Okay, so this is a matter of multiplying these now. So multiply numerators, multiply denominators. Um, so we've got 1 times 5 gives us 5. And in the bottom line, you can use your sort of FOIL multiplication. In fact, I'll write it out in full first, just in case of Anybody watching might not have done that. I know you guys probably will have, but... So, FOIL, or whatever your normal method is, S times S gives you S squared. Um, 2 times S gives you 2S. Um, 11 times S gives you 11S. So, am I in the way? The people on this side, can you see past me? Yeah, okay. And 11 times 2 gives you 22. Now, this is just some simple maths, really, but simple here, but it might not be so simple in the exam. So we've got s squared plus 13s plus 22, and hopefully that's the answer that's in your sheet. Yeah, so that did work out correctly. And then, so that's the first bit. So that's part 2.1, part 1. Uh, then it says calculate the undamped resonant frequency of the system, the damping factor and then explain how the damping factor affects the step response. So if you look at that, hopefully if you've done it correctly, you should end up with a second order function, yeah? Um, that very obviously is. Um, as I say, if you've done it wrong, just make up some numbers, but make it into a second order function. Because I know an exam is very stressful and it's quite a short term state, so just do what you can. <coughs> so this relates to your um, standard second order function, which most of you should know, A omega n, squared over s squared plus 2, theta which I can't draw, omega n s plus omega n squared. Again, I would suggest you memorise that one. I know it's quite long, but it's quite standard. So I suggest you memorise that. I don't know if you'll be giving it an exam or not. I can't actually remember. Um, so, and then you've done this in your coursework. It's just a matter of relating the terms to each other. So the first question is, what's the undamped resonant frequency? This term here is your undamped resonant frequency. So we just need to see, looking at the two equations, what's the S squared, what's multiplying the S, and what's not got an S capital? And there's quite obviously the 22, because of the way I've laid it out. Of course, in the exam, <clears throat> yours might come out in a different layout. You know, you might have this S term at the end. So... It's probably an idea to rearrange it so that you start with your highest power of s, then your next power of s, and then your number. Um, then it's easier to compare the two and not get confused. Any questions so far? Quite easy so far, I think, yeah. Okay, and then, the, so we just want to relate the terms together, so we'd have that m, omega n squared equals 22. So omega n is obviously going to be the square root of 22. Let's square root of both sides. Hopefully that will give us a right answer. Um, yeah, so that gives us 4.69. Okay, yeah, you guys are a wee bit late, so we'll have to just watch the video for the first yeah. bit. Yeah. If you can remember, put your units on it, but um, again, I probably won't take marks off you for missing out units. Unless you're going to get 100%, then I probably would take marks off you for doing that. <laughs> Not really okay, is that all right? No questions about that? Right, we're doing uh, the one that says semester one exam 2017-18. Is that the one you've got? Yeah. Okay, that was useful then. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, then it says what's the damping factor. So you should know that the damping factor is this term here, the zeta, yeah? And that relates to that 13 then. So if we carry on with this, again, I think. Uh, we've got that 2 zeta omega n equals, so that's that term equals 13. Yeah, and it's just a little quite easy algebra. Um, zeta is going to be equal to 13 divided by 2 times omega n. That's just by dividing both sides by 2 and omega, 2 times omega n. Yeah, so hopefully you can do that. So we end up with over 2 times 4.69. And again, of course, if you've got that 6, 9 wrong, um, you can still get the full marks for the next bit using the number that you use. So that's going to give us 1.386. Okay, then the last bit you've got to have a wee bit of knowledge about what that actually means. So if you've got a damping factor of 1.386, does that mean systems underdamped, overdamped, or critically damped? <coughs> Have you done any revision? <coughs> Has that been done any revision? No, not yet. It's overdamped. It's overdamped, yeah. We've been about that. Everybody should know that. If one is critically damped, under one is underdamped, over one is overdamped. I'm guessing you all knew that. You're just too scared to tell me anything. Yeah, so we know that this is overdamped because um, if zeta is less than one, that's underdamped. Um, if zeta equals one, that's critically. And if zeta is greater than 1, that's over that. Okay, so that means that the system is probably not going to um, oscillate. It's going to have a response. And I don't think you're actually asked to draw a response, but if you were asked to, you could just do a quick sketch. And if that's amplitude and that's time. So your input's a step, yeah? So an underdamped system's probably going to do something like, sorry, overdamped's probably going to do something like that, yeah? And your underdamped one would have oscillations and then settle out, yeah? You probably know that. Critical damp one will look quite similar. But it'll rise quicker, have a faster settling time rise time, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so you just need to know a wee bit about that to be able to explain what that damping factor means. And we're not looking for locks, it's only worth one mark, so. Okay, any questions about that? That's the whole of 2.1 done. Uh, look very bored or unhappy, you're just worried about the exam. Yeah. Yeah, that's what. Well, unfortunately, this is the problem with accredited well, courses. If the course wasn't accredited, we could just give you a course for some time. IT, but like exams, stuff with them. Okay, is everybody happy with that then? So I'll carry on with the next one? Yeah? Yeah, I'm Okay, right. Okay, so we've got 2.2. .2. No. Okay, so with 2.2, .2, you're going to have to do a little bit of your Laplace um, from. Um, <coughs> First order principles, ideally, yeah. So you could get asked a question, as in, um, I'll do this as well, to change a time domain function to Laplace lap -lap domain from first order principles, yeah. So it won't be a difficult one you'd be asked, it would be quite a simple one. So you hopefully can remember that the. What's going on? I'm just going to try to this one. That's the first order Laplace transform, if you have to do that. 
Um, I can't remember if you have to. So you might be given, maybe the function might be an amplitude. Probably most likely. I'll just do it with that. It's probably not going to be anything more difficult than that, to be honest. So you just put your numbers in there. So if the question says, um, transform to the Laplace domain, the function of time of amplitude 5 or something along that line. You just put that into your integration. Um, you do your integration, so that's going to be 5e minus st over minus s minus s, yeah. Again, you won't get any tables for integration, simple integration like that. You need to know that, okay? So just that look up. If you don't remember that, look up just the integral of e to the minus st. That's essentially what you're integrating. That's <coughs> what you're integrating. Then going from zero to infinity. Um, and then uh, putting in the values of t. So if t is infinity... Um, the form, I don't know if you remember, but the, if you were to plot e to the minus st, if that's amplitude and that's time, what it looks like is it does that, yeah? So that's one and that's obviously zero. So at infinity, so what you're doing is 5e to the minus infinity over negative s minus 5 e to the minus zero over minus s. Yeah, so you can see at that zero it's one, at infinity it's zero, so this term disappears. Yeah, that becomes zero. That becomes minus five times one over negative s, and your final answer gives you minus five over s. Okay, so that's not in this paper, that's just an additional question you might get. I'm not saying you will get it or won't get it. Oh, fucking all. <laughs> well, hopefully, yeah, no. Great answer, isn't it? Don't worry too much about it. It would be worth a lot of marks, even if you did give. Just I don't know what Mark counts in SLOS. Hmm? I don't know what we're done for. Sorry? I don't know what we're done for. I have gone over that. Yeah, yeah I did it probably the first week we looked at Laplace Transform. <laughs> it was quite a long time ago. Round about probably week two. Yeah, I think it was week two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, that should have been positive. Could it be negative, negative? That should be a positive. Yeah, it's just a CR. Someone noticed that, did they? Yeah. Uh, okay, good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> of course, you might not, but if you did get the question, it might not be FE5. It could be 2, 3, 1, anything. All right? <coughs> Some people are still copying that, so I'll give you more minutes. Is that sure? Yeah. Okay, let's go back to the question then. The, the question just has an equation. So. Anyone else still copying this? No? Okay. So the question just has an equation. Um, T equals a half D2 uh, omega T over DT squared plus D Omega t, I think there's a half here as well, actually, uh, over dt. Five over plus, Oh, there was a five there, sorry, that should be five. Plus d omega t over two. Okay, so again, probably the easiest thing is to get rid of the fractions, multiply both sides by two to get rid of them before you do any transformations or anything. So you end up with 2 times b, that looks a bit like a u. I should be careful because when I was doing the, uh, when I was teaching the Chinese people, I kept writing u's instead of v's and they got really confused. Right, you're not going to...
going to get tables of that last trans oh, that last one's wrong. Well. Yeah. You're not going to get tables of Laplace transforms because, to be honest, this is about the hardest you'll ever have to do in terms of actually transforming um, from time to S domain. And you can just memorize this. Um, anytime you've got a second order derivative, you have an S squared time. Anytime you have a first order derivative, you have an S term comes into the equation. So on this side, there's no um, derivatives. So this just transforms directly to V of S. So this is the Laplace transform. <coughs> okay, so constants don't change. Um, this will be cut, get an S squared term in it because of the D2W over DT squared. So that becomes S squared W S. Um, that's got a derivative, a first order derivative, so there's an S term in that one. <coughs> And then the last one just transforms straight over. Like that. Okay, then that doesn't really look much like a transfer function. And what we really want to see is how does omega vary with a change in voltage, yeah? How does the how does the speed, the radial speed vary if we change the voltage? So the next thing would probably be to put stuff into brackets. Um, so W S is constant for all those. It's in all those, not constant, but it's in each of those terms. So we can take that outside a bracket, yeah. get W over V. So we want to keep the W on this side um, and move the V over. So I'm doing this in lots of little steps. I'm sure most people can do this in a faster step. Keep the W on that side and divide both sides by the S squared <coughs> plus 5S plus 3. So that was with a bit of cross multiplication. You should come up with that. I'm sure you can manage that yourselves. That's the end of 2.2 part one, which is quite a lot of work, but probably most of the blocks are for that anyway. So. <coughs> I'm going to be ill for this test, the way things are going. <laughs> this is coughing. Okay, then you, it's asking you to use the final value theorem to um, calculate the steady state error. <laughs> I think it'd be worth more than one mark. No, it's only one mark. Yeah, yeah in, the, in this one, in the real one, it might be worth more. Well, it's just exam, isn't it? Well, I suppose it is. Maybe it was a harder exam. <laughs> okay, so then to use the final value theorem, um, you need to know what the final value theorem is, but it's basically. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to extend this, is it that one? My extension's gone. Oh. Okay. I'll just go on to the next page, I think. <laughs> so a transfer function is 2 over x squared plus 5x plus 3. And the final value theorem is that um, the steady state error is equal to the limit as s tends to infinity, no sorry, s tends to zero, it says time tends to infinity, s that's your final value theorem there, uh, yeah, r of s is your input obviously, g of s is your transfer function, so this is g of s, and r of s is your input. <coughs> So then it's really just a matter of putting everything into that equation. Um, so you've been told that R of S is a step of five, I think. Looking backwards and forwards here, but yeah. 
Oh, sorry. So RT equals 5. And when you transform it, that means RS equals 5 over S. Um, so you're going to replace that in that equation. Okay, so we, let's put that into the equation. So we've got the limit as s tends to zero of s times r of s, s times 5 over s over 1 plus g of s is this whole term here. And that's just come from that final value theorem, which is like a quite well-known mathematical theorem. I'm guessing you guys maybe don't really know it, but again, it's probably something you'll just have to learn here. Yeah? Uh, right, so we can cancel out the S's here. So we just get left with 5 on the top line there. I'm thinking there might be another way of working this out. So if you can't remember the final value theory, you might still be able to get the right answer. But I'll, I'll need to check that when we get to the end of it. There should have been a two over that. Sorry, that's right. Okay, that's just the same bottom line in both cases. So um, ideally, you multiply everything by this to get rid of this part. I think. Did I do that? Yes, I did. Uh, yeah, we'll do that first, actually. It's a wee bit easier because it's the limit as s tends to zero. So all the s's in this are going to become zero. But let's simplify it first and then put the s's into zero. So if we simplify it by multiplying... Well, in fact, do we need to bother? No, let's just make all the s's zero. So that term will become zero. That term will become zero, yeah? Because it's because of this uh, limit as s tends to zero. Okay, so we're left with... Um, the 5 doesn't change, that's still on the top line. And um, on the bottom line, we're going to be left with 1 over plus 2 over 3. Which I can't do in my head, but um, according to the answer, that gives us 3. You can try that on a calculator. I'm <laughs> not sure how that comes out as 3. Does that come out as 3? I don't think that would come out of the street. That might be wrong. Yeah, three, yeah. Two point nine. Yeah, two point nine. Somehow I thought there'd be a fraction there. A decimal place. Okay. Fair enough then. So that's um that's the error. If you put a step of five into the system, you're thinking about what they're actually doing. Yeah? If you're putting a step of five in. Um, what the system's going to do is do that, and then you're left with this as the error between the, the two values. Um, there's probably an easier way of doing that, but the question is specifically asked for that. So I'm just wondering if you could just work out your final value, two-thirds. No, it doesn't work. <coughs> <laughs> 5 minus 2 thirds doesn't leave you with 3. Okay, never mind. You have to do it that way then. Right. Uh, and it's asking you to work out your position velocity and acceleration constants. Uh, you can either remember what type of system it is, or you can just do it from first principles. So you're unlikely to get anything above a type 2 system. Yeah. And this particular one, in fact, that might be a question you might get asked is what type of system this is. So, so if you have a transfer function, 5 over s squared plus 5s plus 3, um, you can work out what type of system that is by the number of free s's in the bottom line. So this one has no free s's in the bottom line, so this one would be a type 0. Do you remember doing that stuff with me at all? No? That was a steady state error, steady state um, lecture. I can't remember how many weeks ago that was. 
Um, if it was S times all that, it would be a type 1. If it was S squared times all that on the bottom line, it would be a type 2. Okay, but this is a type 2, type 0 system. And then we've got our equations for our different constants. We've got Kp equals the limit as S tends to 0 of G of S. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be 5 over S squared plus 5S plus 3. And again, we're going to make the S's become 0 in this equation. So that will become 0, that will become 0. Um, so you're just left with 5 over 3. And actually, you could use that to work out your steady state error, um, because your steady state error, if you can remember the formula, is 1 over 1 plus kp for a system. Let's do this a bit more tidily. Uh, if you're on the next page. People writing this down, I'll wait till you've written. Why did you use <coughs> 5 over s squared? Is it plus 5 s plus 3? They're not two. Right, so oh, sorry, is it two? Yeah. 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 Uh, no, it became five because we had. Oh, I see what you mean. You're right, it should just be the two. Yeah, sorry, that was five, but this should have been two. Sorry, that's all wrong. Yeah. Well done, Robert. Taking that out. I just copied it from off there. You're right, there should be two. Yeah, so that should be a two, which means there should also be a two. Hopefully that's what's in your answers. Right now, because that's what the answer has. Yes, that is what the answer has. Yeah, sorry about that. I just copied it from there, but you're right, it should be two. It's from this one. I was going to put this on a new sheet to make it a tidy little thing anyway. I'll just do that. So, then we're going to find KP first, which we've already done. Is limit s tends to zero of g of s, which we worked out on the previous page was two thirds. Okay, then you've got k um, velocity one. Um, same idea. The difference is just that there's an s term involved. Um, so it's limit as s tends to zero, and um, because there's no three s's in here. Uh, well, we can write it out, but what you're going to end up with is 2s over s squared plus 5s plus 3. And then obviously if s is 0, that's going to become 0. Yeah, because there's an s term on the top line. 2 times 0 gives you 0, which makes the whole equation 0. And you probably don't even need to do the last one. The last one you're going to have ka is going to be the limit as s tends to zero of s squared gs, which is obviously going to be zero. If the previous one was zero, the last one will have to be zero. And then as I say, it might ask you also to find out the actual steady state error from these equations. So for the first one, um, we kind of did that on the previous sheet, but it's e equals one over <coughs> one plus kp. So it's going to be one over one plus the KP we worked out here is two thirds. That should be a two, by the way. Uh, which I think should give us the same answer as before. It should give us three. That's right. That's so when you're looking at it in the video, you can see. So that's a, maybe an easier way of working out the error, but there you go, that's another way of doing it. Um, and obviously for the other two, for this one, the error is 1 over kv. So this is to do with ramps, putting in ramps into the system and looking at how much they converge or diverge. 
Um, so that's obviously going to be tending to infinity. 1 over 0 is infinity, and this one's the same. Um, so type zero systems, will only, you'll only be able to calculate the error for um, a step input. You can't calculate for a ramp or a parabola. Uh, type one systems, you can calculate KP and KB, but not KA. And I don't think you'll get type, type two. I think you'd either be asked type zero or type one. <laughs> Okay, so depending on what type you are, you might have different calculations. Okay. So we only did one lecture on this, so I'm guessing you might have forgotten a bit of that, but. Okay, next one is the bode plot one. Um, so the bode plots often put people off, but they're actually not that bad. Oh, that? <laughs> Do you want me to carry on? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that sounds very happy. Right. Um, is anyone still copying that? <laughs> no, I'm just doing it. I'm doing it for a minute. I'm on the next question, though. Oh, you're on the next question? Yeah, I'm yeah. 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 two or three. Right, I need to actually find you. Shut your phone for this one. <laughs> Okay, so we've got our both plots here. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about the phase one. I would concentrate on the um, gain plot, yeah? It's probably easier to work out from the gain plot what's going on. So it says work out what the system transfer function is um, for this both plot. So again, you need a wee bit of knowledge. You need to know that zeros cause a 20 dB per decade rise, yeah? I don't know if I'll let you write on here. We'll try that. Yeah, and you know that poles cause a fall, 20 dB per decade fall, yeah? Um, so we can look at what's happening at the graph and we can work out from the bottom line. Um, if I scroll down a little bit, I don't like scrolling down with that. <coughs> Um, you're more likely to get a question asking you to interpret a bow chart than to draw one, because I found in the past I've asked people to draw bow plots, and it's quite hard to work out what you've actually tried to do if you've got it wrong. Okay, unfortunately, the frequency scale's right at the bottom. In fact, oh yeah, here's a frequency scale here. I don't know if that's... Oh, it is on that one. Okay, that's all right. In a strange place, I thought it would have been at the bottom. It's not. So we're just trying to look at the points where... We've got poles and zeros, so there's obviously something happening here, something happening here, here, and there, because the slope gets steeper, steeper there. Okay, so the first one, we've got a rise, so that's obviously going to be a zero, and you can work out what it is. Um, if, in a logarithmic scale, if that's one, that's two, that's three, four, five. So that's a five, yeah? So zero at five. So we've got a zero at five, yeah? I'm just going to put equals 5, that's not quite right, but it was a 0 at 5. Okay, the next one, um, it's been going up, and then it flattens, so what do you think that would be? Pull. That's obviously a pull. <laughs> yeah, because pull brings it down, yeah? So um, that's at 20, 10, 20. How is it a pull if it makes it fall 20 decibels per day? That's not falling at all, it's just... Because it's a cumulative effect. Okay, so because it was rising, um, it's going to flatten it. If it had been going straight, it would have fallen. Does that make sense? No. If this, this would carry on rising if there wasn't a pole there, yeah? So when you add a 20 dB per decade drop, it just cancels out the 20 <coughs> dB per decade rise. Right. Yeah, because there's already been a zero. That's a good question, though. Yeah? Should it not just rise to the point where it stops rising and then fall? Should it not be like a peak then? Why is it flat, Because that would be a 40 dB per decade drop to come to change it. How can I explain that? For the 20 dB change, should it not just rise up to the point where a pole comes in? But the 20 decibel changes it. 
Yeah, it's a 20 decimal change. So it's changed. So it fell on the 20 decimal. So if it kept rising, then we had a. Did that make sense? It's only explained about 10 Okay, then we've got this other one here, which I kind of. I can't actually see now, but oh, here we go. Uh, so working that one out, that was 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I make that 80. Yeah. 10, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Yeah, this, that seems to be about 80, I would say. So that's another pole, because obviously it's starting to drop now. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got this final pole here because you can see it's getting steeper so at that point it's now doing minus 40 per decade yeah and there it was just doing minus 20 up to this point is that all right everybody follow that okay so that's at 100 200 300 yeah <laughs> no. okay so that's just a matter of knowing zeros on the top line holes on the bottom line and put them into your equation. I've, I've not really got space here, but well, maybe I have. So you're going to have an S plus 5 on the top from your 0, and then on the bottom you're going to have an S plus 20, an S plus 80, and I haven't really got space, but an S plus 300. That's all on the bottom line. Yeah, so that's quite straightforward, I think. If there are more zeros, would they just go in the top line as well. If there were more zeros, they'd be on the top line, yeah. And more poles would be on the bottom line. <coughs> okay, then the other thing you're asked for is to work out, so you probably wouldn't be asked to do much more with an equation like yeah. that. Um, the reason for that is you can see that's going to be a third order transfer function, and you've not really looked at third order transfer functions. So you can almost guess, if you've got an S cubed term in the bottom, that's going to be the end of the calculation in most cases. Right, so and then it asks you to find out gain margin and phase margin. So again, working on the same plot, I scroll down and try scrolling down. Oh, never get this to work. I can't really get both of them to do that, so I'm trying to zoom out so that they go to film. A bit small. It's not bad, That's not bad, you can see that, yeah. Okay, so the, the two key points, I'll rub out what's there. So the two key points are where the, the gain crosses zero and where the phase crosses minus 180. Okay, so probably the first thing to do is just <coughs> on your actual question paper, you know, if you've got both plots on your question paper, just write on it, it's fine. You don't have, it doesn't matter, nobody's going to look at it anyway. So, uh, so starting with the phase where the seems to be round about there, actually, looking at that. So that ties in with that zero, yeah? So that's the first point. And then the other one is minus 180, which is, that's hard to see, but that's 150, uh, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 60, 70. So minus 180 will be here, I think. I'll go with that, then. Somewhere around there, anyway. Um, to be honest, it doesn't matter if you don't get this right. Exactly, so long as you've got the theory. We're testing your understanding. We're not really testing your ability to read a graph. To Interpretation. Exact point. Okay, so then we can extend those down. I can only do it on black on the sheet, but... Extend that down. So that ties in with that point there. Yes. And then we can extend this one up. And that ties in with this point here. Um, so if we go for gain margin first, um, gain margin ties in with this point. You can shift that whole graph up uh, by this amount. Not very well drawn because my board's not great, but by that amount. So if we look at that, we can see that says that's minus 40, this point here. So in fact, that is our gain margin, yeah? 
gain margin equals 40 decibels. We could move that graph up by 40 decibels and it would still be stable, theoretically. Wouldn't, wouldn't be marginally stable, but it'd be fine. Okay, so that's actually quite easy, I think. But those plots are not as bad as you might think. And then the other one's phase margin is um, how much you could switch, move that point down. Um, so it's from there down to the one eight, minus 180, which was here. So that's a wee bit more tricky to work out, isn't it? It's minus... It's negative, isn't it? So it's 180 minus... Range negative. Uh, maybe we should look at the... 90, is that? 90? Yeah. yeah, so 180 minus 90, which will give us 90. <laughs> so our phase margin is 90 degrees. Is that what I actually got on the answer sheet? Yeah. Yeah, that is the answers I've got, so that's cool. But actually, I think that's quite an easy question, yeah. if you can read that correctly. And you're probably not going to get anything much more with much more poles and zeros than that, to be honest. One more, maybe, at the very most. Okay, another wee bit about, is it stable? Marginally stable, what's wrong with it? So you need to understand what you've done. Um, but this is obviously a stable system because it's got a very large phase margin and quite a large gain margin. I think in the notes it says a gain margin of about 10 decibels is fine, 30 degrees phase margin is fine as well to allow for environmental changes or so you can't stable. So this is very stable. So if it was over 10 and over 30 degrees, you can't stable? Yeah, definitely. Right. So this is a stable system. This is a good system. It's unlikely to ever go unstable unless you make a significant change to it. Uh, it says to explain it as well. Well, the answer, the, the explanation in the sheet is all I'm looking for. So. Ah, yeah. That's perfect. <laughs> you know, I'm not looking for long paragraphs, apart from the last bit, the last Should section. Push it up? Push it up? That's a good question. I would be good. Yeah, you might get the Nyquist one. Oh, never. Oh. I'll do the Nyquist one for you as well, yeah? I'm not saying you will. I'm just We're getting the both of us. We're getting the both of us. I've seen it already. You won't get both. You'd never get both. That's too much. Is anybody still writing down here? Anybody still copying? So I'll do the Nyquist one as well. I'm just here. So Nyquist plots just basically a plot on the phase and gain as the frequency changes. Um, generally, it will look probably something like that here. And the points you're interested in here are the points where the radius of that circle is 1. Um, so that's your real axis. That's your, sorry, no, that's your imaginary axis. That's wrong. <laughs> That's your imaginary axis, that's your... Oh! I don't know what's happened to it. Oh! I must have pressed the wrong thing. That's your real axis, right. So the two points are where the graph crosses minus one and has a 180 degrees phase shift, uh, which will probably be, I don't know, if it's a stable system, will be outside that circle here. Well, let's say it's a stable system. And then the other point of interest is where the <coughs> radius of the circle is one. Um, to be honest, that would probably be drawn on it for you, just to give you a wee bit of help, because you can't, you're not going to have a protractor or anything or a ruler to be able to measure stuff. So you can get your phase margin just by measuring. So that's got an amplitude of one, and the phase margin is just that angle. I think the gain margin is one minus that now. Yeah, and your gain margin is you read where this crosses the graph, yeah? So say that's point A. Um, your gain margin. is 1 over A, 
or if you want it in decibels, it's 20 log 1 over A. Oops, A. So again, not too difficult, really. Quite easy. It's probably actually easier than the bird plot in some ways, but... to do 20 log for the base margin as well? Um, well, yeah, it's normally in decibels. And I see here that, that other question paper I gave you, I've asked for it in decibels. So yeah, I would suggest you do do that, otherwise you might lose half a mark or something. You need all the marks you can get. <coughs> <laughs> okay. Right, uh, what else have we got? we just got one on instrumentation, the last yeah. one, yeah? Anybody copying that? Yeah, we'll give some more time. Um, what was the last question? Um, formula is quite a common instrumentation question. It's about the only real calculation. Well, no, I don't know, because there are a few other things. Okay, so then we've got question 2.4. Okay, the last question is quite easy. So the question 2.4, sensitivity is always just output over input. So it goes 4 to 20 milliamps over 0 to 5 kilopascals. So the sensitivity is going to be 16 milliamps over 5. Yeah. So it was 20 milliamps minus 4 milliamps divided by 5 minus 0, which is just 5, yeah? Which is 16 milliamps over 5, which gives you 32 yeah, that's quite easy. I yeah. think everybody could do that. No, no great difficulty yeah. in that one. Yeah, yeah. And then what's the next one? Next bit is what's it going to read? What the amount is going to read? What will the output be at three kilopascals? So probably the best way would just to be find out what the value is at three kilopascals and then work out the accuracy change. Mm -hmm. So at three kilopascals, it's going to be obviously it's got to be four milliamps minimum because that represents your zeros. Um, then you've got your three point two microamps per pascal. Times your three. Was it kilopascals or just pascals? Kilopascals, yeah, three kilopascals. <coughs> okay, and that's just a straightforward calculation. I'm sure most people can do that. So that gives us 13.6 milliamps. So that's what you would expect it to read, but then obviously it's got accuracy, um, which could affect what you actually get. Um, so the accuracy is based on the full scale reading, which is 20 milliamps. Um, so its accuracy is 2%. So you need to work out what that actually means. So it's 20 milliamps times 2%. 0.4. 0 0.4? Yeah. So that's the worst case difference it could be, and it says... Uh, 
Oh, right, you just subtract and add that to give the range of values it could probably read at this three kilopascals. So 13.6 minus 0.4 is obviously 13.2. Just write plus or minus 0.4 right now. Yeah. That's a good idea. Right. You mean rather than actually working it yeah. out? Oh, surely. <laughs> probably, yeah, I'd probably accept that. Yeah, that would be fine. Go on, Mike. I'll save us valuable time. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Sure, they didn't think it would be able to add that on. Okay. Um, it's probably unlikely we're going to get this question anyway, to oh. be honest. Oh, is that it? Well, because it's in the 1780 <laughs> paper, I'm probably not going to answer the same thing. You may as well tell us what's in it for a laugh. So you're, that's what I'm saying about your interpretation. It's a broad subject, so you need to know a good bit about it, yeah. Um, certainly the self-assessment questions you've been doing over the weeks. There could be any questions from that, calculation-wise. OK, that's all of that paper. Do you want me to do anything else? I don't know if there's anyone else. Let me see what else there is if there's anything really different. Oh, give us some useful ones, though, I think. They're all useful. No, but you don't need useful. Are you useful? No. Are you just a classic challenge? I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to look at it. Okay. Possibly the derivation of a model for a system might be of use. So there's one of the other papers that's got an LCR circuit. Um, you could also get an aspring damper. Do you want me to go through that one? The one no, that's got the LCR? Yeah, let's, yeah, do it. let's go through that one. They're a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We're on papers, because I've only found two papers. OK, I'll show you that first then. So, question was, where are all the papers? Um, they're in. So, if we go back to assessments, um, so there's some in this past papers? Yeah, I found it. Folder? Is that the ones you were looking at? Yeah, I found it. Right. So, these mock examples of solutions? Old style? I think there's two in there. Um, there's this mock exam. Oh, yeah. And then down at the bottom here, there's mock exam two. <laughs> okay, so there's two sets of mock exams. Um, they're probably not in the right format, yeah. as in they probably don't have multiple choice calculation explanation questions. But they'll give you an example of the sort of things you can get asked in, in any section. Yeah. And then if we go back up to past papers. Um, Right, I think that would be actual right. past papers are in here. Yeah. And these are actually from exam, previous exams, so they're not designed to check your whole entire knowledge. They're just a subset of questions that were asked in exams previously. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, so there's these ones here. That's the ones I found. You found these practice yeah, ones. ones yeah, well, to get used to the format and to try, especially if you're trying to work out can you do it in two hours, um, you probably want to concentrate on this one. Make sure you can do that in the two hours. <laughs> or that one. That one was also a two hour question, so again, two hour paper. It's just a different format. Right, I'll go back to the one I was going to show you, which I think. It's the March 5th. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, so you might be asked to either look at a bass spring damper or an RFC circuit. Um, I think when you look over the past papers, you might see at one point there was a parallel RLC circuit. Um, you're not going to get anything as difficult as that, because that was in the days where there was, you still did three questions out of four yeah. to get more time. So don't worry about that one. But yeah, but that's well, that's this one you might get. That's what it is. Oh, after exam, you know what I mean? During exam, we're going to pass. 50% mark in exam, pass. 50. 50. 50 mark, oh, pass. Yeah. You're saying a bit like you're actually. I'm talking about it, yeah. Yeah, that's how you're doing it. Nice, so it was actually. You're really lovely there. The best way to do this is do it in the time domain first and then do the transformation. Um, we've got current going around there as well. <laughs> so the mechanical people tend to find this a bit more tricky. Um, you're all electrical, I think, here today. But I know there's some mechanical people watching as well. So 
Uh, first thing is Kirchhoff's voltage law. So our voltages around the loop equals zero. So you've got that V T equals drop across the resistor plus the drop across the inductor plus the drop across the capacitor. Okay, then we could put in the equations using Ohm's law and Faraday's laws for the inductor. So you've got that I times R or R times I because I want to put the graphics T. Same thing. That's from Ohm's law. And then we've got Faraday's law for the induction. <coughs> L. And actually that last one we don't want to change because what we're trying to do is get a transfer function VC T over V T. Oh, I'm sorry, well, transform that to the S domain VCS over VS. So we can leave that last one as it is. Um, but then we want to change I to be VC, yeah? So you need to know that I, again from first principles, I T equals C times the rate of change of voltage. Um, you won't be given any of these equations, you need to know these. These are first principle things. Should have probably learned these in NC level, some of them. Certainly Ohm's law and stuff like that. Okay, so then we can replace the i's with this equation here. So we've got R, C, uh, E, B, C, T by DT, uh, plus <coughs> L, C, D, B, C, T by DT. Uh, at this point, it's probably easiest to do the transform and carry on with a linear equation. Does it Everybody follow that okay so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah, it's actually not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, what you're meant to be able to do is actually do this with more complicated circuits, but I wouldn't ask you that in an exam because it's tricky. But, <laughs> The point of this theory, the main reason for doing this is to be able to model systems. So you should be able to model more difficult systems. But if you do the transform now, um, that's just a VT, so that just transforms to VS. Um, on this side we've got, I've done something wrong there, haven't I? That should have been two. But that's a second order one, because you already have a first order derivative. So you're taking the first order, de sec first order derivative of a first order derivative, so it becomes a second order derivative. Let us scroll up. Right. See, there's a derivative here, but you already have a derivative here, so this then becomes a second order one. Because you're taking, instead of uh, i, you're doing di by dt. Yeah, you just need to know that. You don't really need to understand the maths behind it. Right, so, um, so this one's just going to become r. C, and because you've got that derivative, that becomes times S. That's from your Laplace transform theory, but you don't really need to explain that. You just need to know how to do it. Um, this one's going to be an S squared term. And this last one is just going to be VC. Because there's no derivative in the last term there. Okay, then it's a matter of putting, taking brackets and taking the VC of S outside the bracket. So you end up with V of S equals VC S times RC. Oh, sorry, there should have been an S there. RC S plus LC S squared plus one. Okay, be careful on a common thing people do in exams is they say, oh, we're taking that outside the brackets, it disappears. It doesn't disappear, it's still there. Um, VCS times one gives you that. Try not forget that. Eh? A lot of times people just put zero there and that's, then that then mucks up your equation and you don't, 
second row of the system. Okay. And then just with some cross multiplication, we can get the transfer function. So we end up with PCS over BS equals 1 over RCS plus LCS squared plus 1. Now that's not exactly in the form that you're used to seeing. Normally this S squared terms first, so let's just rearrange the bottom line first. <coughs> So you can do that with any equation that you get that looks like it might be second order. Just rearrange it so you've always got the highest power of s on the left-hand side. It just makes it easier to analyze it. And then finally, normally we're used to seeing s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared. So we need to get rid of this lc term here. Obviously you can do that just by dividing everything by lc. But of course, if you divide the bottom line by lc, you also have to divide the top line. So you end up with 1 over LC on the top line, and then S squared, because the LCs cancel, um, plus RC over LC, S plus 1 over LC. Um, of course, those Cs can also cancel. So I did that quite quickly. I only a few seconds to this. See if you're happy with that. Okay, then the question might follow on um, to ask you to calculate or to put some values in and ask you to calculate omega n zeta k. Um, you just do that the way we did the previous question, yeah, with the, with the equation k over omega n. Yeah, your standard. Oh, that should be nice. We've already done a question like that, so I'm not going to do that one again. But you just compare that with that and work out the, the values. You'd be given numbers for that. You wouldn't be asked to do it with the equation. Okay, I'm trying to see what else there is that might be worth looking at. That's the same that we've done already. So I've got the There's a mass spring damper one in one of the... Um, class papers, you can have a look at that as well. I'm just looking to see if there's anything else calculation wise you need to know. I mean, obviously, there will be instrumentation stuff, but. Okay, Okay. Yeah, so this is the paper, that horrendous equation there was the one with the parallel circuit. Don't bother learning that unless you're really interested in the subject. You're not going to get anything as difficult as that. Perfect. <laughs> is that one you said in the board? Uh, it's <coughs> the one that says mock exam. Doesn't really have a. Mock exam question mark? Question C. Uh, 2C. To be honest, this is quite a difficult question paper, so, you know, if you want to challenge yourself and make sure you can do the easy questions, um, this would be one to be worth looking at, I think. But I suspect it's slightly harder than what you'll actually get. Okay. You won't get the Ruth Harowitz either, because it takes too long to do this all this matrix calculation. I won't ask you to do that in the exam, it's not a long enough time. Yeah, that's about it. The only other thing I would say, like, instrumentation amps, you definitely need to know. Bernoulli's formula, uh, make sure you, can, you know that and can rearrange it to 
get numbers, quick answers from. There's questions like that in the past, not past papers, the self-assessment questions. Anything else? I can't think what else you might need to know. Strain gauges, the equations for them. Yeah, these are all sort of calculation things you might get in the instrumentation part. Anybody got any more questions? So what do you want to do now? Just sit here and work through past papers? Just through past papers, yeah. Yeah, and I can be around to help you to get stuck. That's the best bet. Okay, I hope that was useful. I hope I didn't put my microphone on. I have done these lectures before and forgotten to put the microphone on. Get no recording. Right, cheer up, it's not the end of the world. Honestly, it's nearly Christmas. Yeah. This is your last program before Christmas, so. Christmas is the start of the next few definitely. You'll be fine. As long as you can do all this stuff. Christmas counts as a reset. Sorry? Next week. Yeah, Tuesday. I think. Tuesday? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 How's your phone work? Happy to be in two weeks time now. Hi then. Yeah. This call has been disconnected. Thank you for joining.